Imagine this. You're sitting at home, everything seems normal, and then, bam, the ground beneath you starts shaking violently. Buildings sway, roads crack, and within minutes, a wall of water taller than a 10-story building is racing toward the coast. This isn't a scene from a Hollywood disaster movie. This is real life. Just days ago, a 5.3 magnitude earthquake struck off the coast of Cascadia, and scientists are warning, this could be the beginning of something far worse. But here's the terrifying part. California is next. What's happening beneath our feet right now could change everything. Don't scroll away, because what you're about to hear could save your life. On February 24th, 2025, a magnitude 5.3 earthquake rattled the Cascadia subduction zone, just off the coast of Port McNeil, Canada. This wasn't just another tremor. It was a stark reminder of the region's deadly potential. The Cascadia Fault, stretching over 600 miles from Vancouver Island to Northern California, is one of the most dangerous seismic zones on the planet. Scientists have long warned that this fault is capable of producing a magnitude 9.0 megaquake, and the recent activity suggests that stress is building rapidly. But what does this mean for the millions of people living in the Pacific Northwest? To understand the gravity of the situation, we need to look back at history. The last time Cascadia fully ruptured was in 1700, unleashing a catastrophic earthquake and tsunami that devastated coastal communities and even reached Japan. Now, over 325 years later, the fault has been eerily silent. But silence in seismology is often the calm before the storm. The recent 5.3 tremor, followed by a swarm of smaller quakes, is a chilling sign that the fault is waking up. And if it fully ruptures, the consequences could be apocalyptic. The Cascadia subduction zone is where the Juan de Fuca plate is slowly sliding beneath the North American plate. This process, called subduction, creates immense pressure over centuries. When the fault finally gives way, it releases energy equivalent to hundreds of nuclear bombs. The result? A megaquake that could last up to five minutes, followed by a tsunami with waves as high as 80 feet. But here's the kicker. Unlike the San Andreas Fault, which releases stress through frequent smaller quakes, Cascadia stores it all until it can't anymore. Scientists have been monitoring the region closely, and the data is alarming. Over the past 30 days, there have been 115 earthquakes in the area, including several magnitude 4.0 plus events. These quakes are like warning shots, hinting at the immense stress building beneath the surface. And while individually they may seem minor, together they paint a terrifying picture. The question isn't if the big one will hit, it's when. And when it does, the Pacific Northwest will face a disaster unlike anything in modern history. But Cascadia isn't the only threat. Just south of the subduction zone lies California, home to the infamous San Andreas Fault. The recent activity in Cascadia has raised concerns that stress could be transferring to other fault lines, including the San Andreas. If Cascadia ruptures, it could trigger a chain reaction, putting California at risk of its own catastrophic earthquake. And with the San Andreas Fault already overdue for a major quake, the stakes couldn't be higher. California is no stranger to earthquakes, but a magnitude 9.0 event would be on a completely different scale. The shaking would last for minutes, toppling buildings, collapsing bridges, and triggering landslides. And if the San Andreas Fault ruptures simultaneously, the devastation would be unimaginable. Cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco would be ground zero, with millions of people caught in the chaos. The question is, is California ready for such a disaster? The answer might terrify you. One of the most terrifying aspects of a Cascadia megaquake is the tsunami it would generate. Within minutes of the quake, a wall of water would race toward the coast at speeds of up to 500 miles per hour. Coastal towns like Seaside, Newport, and even parts of Seattle would be wiped off the map. The waves could surge miles inland, 
sweeping away everything in their path. And for those who survived the initial quake, the tsunami would be a second wave of destruction. Historically, tsunamis generated by Cascadia have reached as far as Japan. In 1700, the tsunami was so powerful that it caused damage thousands of miles away. Today, with millions more people living along the coast, the death toll could be staggering. Emergency response teams are scrambling to prepare, but the reality is that no amount of planning can fully mitigate the devastation. The clock is ticking, and the next megaquake could strike at any moment. What's happening in Cascadia isn't an isolated event. Around the world, seismic activity is on the rise. From the magnitude 8.0 quake that shook the Caribbean to the recent 6.8 tremor in Japan, the planet is experiencing a surge in powerful earthquakes. Even volcanic activity is increasing, with Mount Etna erupting violently and Santorini experiencing earthquake swarms. These events are all connected, part of a larger pattern of tectonic unrest. Some scientists believe that these global disturbances could influence major fault lines like Cascadia. As stress builds in one region, it can transfer to others, creating a domino effect. This means that the recent quakes in Cascadia could be a precursor to even larger events. The Earth's crust is like a giant puzzle, and when one piece moves, the rest can follow. The question is, where will the next big quake strike? The human cost of a Cascadia megaquake would be staggering. Studies predict that over 10,000 people could die in the initial quake and tsunami. Millions more would be left without power water, or basic necessities. Hospitals would be overwhelmed, and emergency services would struggle to reach those in need. The economic impact would be equally devastating, with entire industries crippled and the region taking years to recover. But the true cost goes beyond numbers. Families would be torn apart, communities destroyed, and survivors left to pick up the pieces. The psychological toll would be immense, with many struggling to cope with the trauma. And for those living in coastal areas, the fear of another tsunami would linger for years. The question is, how do we prepare for a disaster of this scale? The answer lies in education, infrastructure, and community resilience. In the face of such a threat, technology is our best hope. Early warning systems like those used in Japan can provide precious seconds or even minutes of warning before a quake hits. These systems use sensors to detect the initial waves of an earthquake, giving people time to take cover. But while early warning systems are crucial, they're only part of the solution. Scientists are also using advanced modeling to predict where and when the next big quake might strike. By analyzing seismic data and monitoring fault lines, they can identify patterns and potential triggers but even with the best technology, predicting earthquakes remains a challenge. The key is to be prepared, not just for the quake itself, but for the aftermath. History has shown us what happens when a megaquake strikes. In 2011, a magnitude 9.0 quake off the coast of Japan triggered a devastating tsunami that killed over 15,000 people. The disaster also caused a nuclear meltdown at the Fukushima power plant, highlighting the cascading effects of such an event. The lessons from Japan are clear. Preparation is key, and even the most advanced societies can be brought to their knees by nature's fury. Closer to home, the 1906 San Francisco earthquake serves as a stark reminder of California's vulnerability. The quake, which had a magnitude of 7.9, destroyed much of the city and killed thousands. But while San Francisco has since rebuilt, the threat remains. The question is, have we learned from the past or are we doomed to repeat it? So what can you do to protect yourself and your loved ones? The first step is to educate yourself. Know the risks in your area and have a plan in place. This includes identifying safe zones in your home, preparing an emergency kit, and knowing evacuation routes but preparation goes beyond the individual. It's about building resilient communities. Support local initiatives to strengthen infrastructure 
and improve emergency response, advocate for better building codes, and invest in early warning systems. And most importantly, stay informed. The more you know, the better prepared you'll be. Because when the ground starts shaking, it's too late to prepare. The truth is, the Cascadia megaquake isn't a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Scientists agree that the fault is primed for another rupture, and the recent activity is a stark reminder of the danger. But while we can't stop the quake, we can control how we respond. The question is, will we rise to the challenge or will we be caught off guard? As we wrap up, I want to leave you with this thought. The ground beneath your feet isn't as stable as it seems. The forces that shape our planet are powerful and unpredictable. But by staying informed and prepared, we can face the future with confidence. So share this video, subscribe for more updates, and let's work together to build a safer world. Because when the big one hits, every second counts.